In this section, I'll discuss Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law usually applies to oscillating systems, um, and it can be expressed in this simple form. A force is equal to minus some constant k, usually referred to as the spring constant, times the displacement of the system from equilibrium x. So if we think about the simple system of a mass attached to a spring, as we displace the mass away from equilibrium, either if we stretch it or we compress it, there will be a restoring force in the opposite direction. So for instance, if x is positive, which means which means we're stretching the spring, the force will point to the left, in this case meaning back toward equilibrium to the left. Uh, if we compress the spring, we push it to the left here, then x will be negative, and therefore the force will be positive, meaning it's going to push it back toward positive x or back toward equilibrium. And so this is the essence of Hooke's Law. We can define a potential energy associated with this force by doing uh, the integral shown here. So we integrate the force over a distance. Say, in this case, we're going to integrate from the equilibrium position, x prime equals 0, up to some position x. And you can see that if you do this integral, you're going to get uh, 1 half kx squared. So in other words, the potential energy associated with displacing the mass from equilibrium is 1 half, x, uh, 1 half kx squared. And what's interesting to note here is that this term here, x squared, um, doesn't care what the sign of x is. If you displace the mass a uh, positive distance x from equilibrium, you get exactly the same potential energy as if you displace it a negative distance x from equilibrium. So if you stretch or compress the spring the same distance, you get exactly the same potential energy function. If we plot the potential energy function, it looks like this. Uh, it looks like just a parabola centered on x equals 0. So uh, if you displace the mass in either direction, you'll get exactly the same potential energy. And this is a function that's called an even function, meaning that it's the same on either side of x equals 0. And we can actually apply a Hooke's Law to a wide variety of physical systems. Basically, any physical system uh, that has an equilibrium uh, position, a stable equilibrium position. So we can imagine, for instance, a system that has a really complicated, funny uh, potential energy function that does all kinds of stuff, but in the neighborhood of x equals 0, it's roughly a parabola. This is equivalent to the idea that you can write the potential energy function as a Taylor expansion. So as we've discussed in class, you could write the potential energy function near x equals 0 in the following way. You have these terms here. And so you have this first term, uh, the potential energy evaluated at 0. Um, this is just going to be a constant, and so it actually doesn't matter what the term, what this term is, because remember, um, constant terms in the potential energy don't drive dynamics, so this term is actually not all that important. The next term in the Taylor expansion is the first derivative of the potential energy function evaluated at x equals 0. So this is the first, first derivative evaluated at x equals 0 times displacement from, from uh, equilibrium. Now, if we have uh, a potential energy function which has an equilibrium position, what that means is that it must uh, be roughly parabolic uh, near the potential energy equilibrium position. In other words, the slope at the equilibrium, that slope has to be equal to zero. Therefore, this first term here will be zero if the potential energy has an equilibrium uh, near x equals zero. And then finally, you're left with just this term over here, one-half the second derivative of the potential energy function evaluated at x equals 0 times x squared. Uh, and in, uh, for a system as illustrated here on this chart, uh, this will be the term that actually results in Hooke's Law.
And so again, for a potential energy function which exhibits uh, an equilibrium point, we can approximate its value near that equilibrium in this way. We can work backwards and show that uh, this potential energy function gives us Hooke's law back. Remember, the force can be written as minus the spatial derivative of the potential energy function. Take it, we take an x derivative of that potential energy function and we find that we get minus u double prime evaluated at x equals 0 times x. And recall that Hooke's law is minus kx. And so what this tells us is that the second derivative of the potential energy function evaluated at equilibrium, that is the spring constant or the oscillating constant in the system. And so any uh, potential energy function that has some equilibrium position exhibits, at least near that equilibrium, exhibits uh, a Hooke's law-like behavior. So this, this approach that we're going to use to modeling oscillations applies to a wide range of, of systems, not just springs attached to masses.